Running afoul of a woman with a fatal attraction doesn't just happen in modern times. History bears out that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. The meek may inherit the earth. They certainly get the hell kicked out of them while they're here. This is the story of Martha Wise. Sometimes those meeks strike back, um, and when they do, it isn't pretty. In 1925, Martha would become Ohio's most notorious serial killer. There's simply nothing like this before the Martha Wise case to give people any kind of perspective or, or inkling that this kind of thing is even possible. Crime writer John Stark Bellamy II has documented more than 140 murders. But Martha's story tops them all. She tried to kill 21 people. It was a fatal attraction out of control by a woman nobody loved. Of all the killers I've ever written about, the only one that I have any real sympathy for is Martha Wise. Forensic psychologist and criminal profiler Candace DeLong thinks Martha was probably suffering from what is now a well-known illness. It appears to me that she had bipolar disorder, which would certainly account for her crazy behavior throughout her life. At her husband's funeral, Martha exhibits the kind of behavior the people of Hardscrabble, Ohio, had come to expect. Even her family thinks Martha has a frail mind. They heard stories of Martha yelling in the street, burning down barns, and stealing random possessions. Setting barns on fire, stealing, all these things that, well, frankly, if they happened today in, in, an, in even a small community, she would be picked up by the police and brought to a mental facility. But small town psychiatric care in the 1920s hardly existed. <laughs> Many sufferers were simply exploited, abused, or both. Like Martha was by her late husband. Martha was a seriously abused and battered wife. She was a defective, unhappy, person who was extremely badly treated just by virtually everyone in her life from the moment that she was born. With her husband's death, Martha is free of matrimonial abuse. But with four children to raise, she needs support. Let's not forget that for the 30 years prior to this, Martha was thought to be odd and weird. But what I don't doubt is that she got even crazier after he died. Martha's troubled mind was spiraling out of control. She developed a new obsession. Inexplicably, she starts turning up at the funerals of strangers. It is not common for someone to be obsessed with funerals and death. And the celebration or the mourning that goes along with the funerals and, and someone passing. That is an aberrant drive. But two years after her husband's death, Martha's luck changes. She meets a man that she wants to marry. But her mother forbids it. Martha's suitor is married already with five children. Martha was not a stable woman, clearly mentally ill for most of her life. And Martha falls in love with someone, and her family is forbidding her from marrying him. Without question, this could cause tremendous resentment. Soon, the family and Hardscrabble will regret their harsh treatment of Martha Wise.
1924, Hard Scrabble, a small town in Ohio, was a hard place for all, but especially the mentally ill. With little pity or treatment, a woman's madness consigned her to misery. Mistreated by her husband, even his death offered little relief for Martha Wise. She was desperate to find someone who would give her the love she had never received and to support her and her four children. So when she found a potential new husband, yet was forbidden to act by her family, Martha snapped. Her madness would come to haunt those who did her wrong. Martha decided the best way for her to handle it, and I think there was a lot of revenge in there from her childhood, was to kill them. Martha invites her family over for Thanksgiving dinner. She strikes for the first time. She may not have been the brightest bulb in the pack, but she knew how to go about things in a direct manner. She went to the drugstore and saw the, the pharmacist there and ordered up a couple of ounces of arsenic. She gave the proverbial excuse of all poisoners, which is that she needed the arsenic to kill rats, which were troubling her buttery or something. Arsenic has been a renowned murder weapon for centuries. So in the 1920s, buyers had to sign their name with every purchase in case a killer needs to be traced. Martha plans to kill her immediate family in one meal. In Martha's mind, killing the people that stood in her path to happiness, her mother, uncle, aunt, was completely logical. Arsenic has an affinity for the cells that are near blood vessels. Almost immediately, there is damage to the blood vessels of the gastrointestinal tract. There's going to be a gastric upset. There's going to be nausea. There's going to be vomiting. There's going to be the passage of blood both up and down through the gastrointestinal tract. Martha's mother, Sophie, succumbs. But her uncle and aunt survive, thinking Sophie's death is an unfortunate bout of influenza. People took these visitations of plague, as it were, for granted. So nobody thought twice about it. It never occurred to anybody that there was some vengeful maniac in their midst who was orchestrating the sickness and death. The symptoms of influenza can be nausea, fatigue, vomiting, diarrhea, and the uh, symptoms of arsenic can mimic those as well. Martha isn't finished with her family. Not by a long shot. Over the next year, she secretly poisons 18 more relatives. The poisons were reapplied because Martha kept either having them over for dinner or going over to her in-law's house for dinner or her mother's relatives. She would reapply the arsenic. Each time, Martha gets away with it by appearing to be nursing her victims back to health. Well, arsenic can kill both by an acute overdose. It can also kill by getting small doses over a longer period of time, something we would call chronic arsenic poisoning. Martha is ridding herself of everyone that's in the way of her happiness. Have some water. 
As a result of this chronic accumulation of arsenic, pretty soon people go into heart failure, people go into respiratory failure, and die a very slow but insidious death. But the plan has a fatal flaw. Eventually, an epidemic of sickness in one family gets police attention. They decided it was probably female. It was probably uh, a female of low intelligence. And female of low intelligence with a grudge against the entire family. And despite killing her family to be free to marry, Martha's prospective husband now disowns her. Well, the boyfriend essentially uh, turned Judas on her. He testified, but essentially said, I, I know not the woman. Martha's deadly harvest came to an end in 1925. She had killed three of her family and crippled more than a dozen with chronic arsenic poisoning. The hard scrabble courtroom heard the telling forensic evidence. We can take hair and actually cut it into small pieces and then measure the amount of arsenic and knowing the rate at which hairs grow per day, we can actually figure out when these doses of arsenic were given. Martha is charged with first degree murder. She's given little leniency for madness. They didn't call them psychiatrists or psychologists back then. They were called alienists, a term I've always loved. And they examined Martha, and I'm sorry to say that they found her sane and competent enough to stand trial. Martha would spend the rest of her days in the Ohio Reformatory for women. But then, the strangest thing happened in Martha's strange life. She finally found happiness. Prison was probably the happiest place Martha had ever been, and where she was probably treated compared to her parents' family, her husband's family, and her, her single widowhood, that was probably the best phase of her life. Martha Wise did better in prison than in real life because prison was easier for her. She probably did not suffer as much from the taunts and teasing and ridicule of other people as she did on the outside. There were probably a lot of other women in prison just like her. Martha enjoyed prison so much she didn't want to leave. When she was released at age 79, she came back the very next day. Martha preferred to stay on the inside until the day she died. <laughs> 